people that are bipolar get uh, bored easily. It's like they're always looking for an adrenaline rush. And I think Larry was a nice guy. Now, if Larry was stealing money out of her purse, beating her upside the head and fucking her sister, then she would have stayed with him. But he was boring to her. I don't hear nobody out there. to realize that while stabbing Clive Davis with her words felt good to her at the time, it was she who would do the bleeding. Obviously, it hurt her, and probably more than we realized at the time, said Sheila Eldridge. Who would have thought that Clive, quite honestly, would be around and Phyllis would be gone? But at that time, we always said Phyllis should have been with me. Clyde focused on Whitney because Whitney was younger and he could better control her. That was bitter for Phyllis. She put a lot of energy into that. She was not going to bite her tongue. Well, I don't know about that. If, she, if that's what she want to run with, then okay. Shout to La Vista. I mean, okay. People crazy. It's everybody else's fault except for their own. As Phyllis began giving interviews to support the album, Glenda encouraged her to speak about her recovery. But Phyllis only did so in generalized terms and never specifically addressed her month-long stay at ARC, the Terraces. Nobody under pressure should touch anything that is mood-altering, she told EM Magazine. I realize that I have a choice to choose a better way to live. It's not easy, but it's more exciting. I can spend these next years of my life exploring my new lifestyle. Bullshit debate. People kill me. You be a month clean and now you can give everybody advice on how to live your life sober, bitch. One thing I know for a fact is once you're an addict, you will always be an addict. You may never touch another drug, sip another drink, none of that. But you will wake up every day fighting that struggle to want to use again. Remember Nate Rob told you. I used to drink too much and use drugs, she said in another interview. There is no place in my present life for that. Now that I no longer indulge in those things, I don't like being around it. It drives me crazy. I now work with God in my own perspective, and there is a partnership. I'm no born-again Christian, but I am adamant about having God in my life. She also mentioned another type of partnership that she longed for. As a woman, this field is isolated and lonely. I want what most women want. I want to marry and have children. I'm looking for Prince Charming, but I'm told men are threatened by me. I can't understand why. It's not threatened, girl. What? I wish you bitches, I, who is the bitch that made up the statement, oh, you can't get a man because a man is threatened by you? Uh... Who's the bitch that made those statements? Now, I'm not saying it's not men out there that prefer women that are not as accomplished as they are or that are less accomplished than they are. I'm not saying that. But when people be like less threatened, no, they can't handle your fucking mouth. You talk too much, bitch. And, and, and that just goes for anybody in any relationship. I had to teach my little sister, hey, you know how you make it in relationships? How you make it that long? Pause. So I was at work and a gay lesbian couple were there. They had been married for four years. And I had told them that... Me and my wife have been off and on for 20 years. We've only been married for, that's right, Lulu. They said, how do you make it that long? You just don't go nowhere. And if you can endure your worst period with a person, and we did, because you know my wife was diagnosed with cancer, while we were having 
very hard times. You hear me? Very, 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 very hard times. And if you all can survive a super duper tough period, then that means that you all are locked in. What I told them was two things. One, you don't always have to respond. A person could be saying the dumbest shit is ever. Just look at them. You don't always have to go back and forth with a person. You don't, especially if you ain't in the mood to argue. If you ain't in the mood to argue, just let that shit go. And just be like, okay, baby. And go on upstairs. You know, I don't know, but just go somewhere else. So then that way you don't argue. But you don't have to argue everything. The second thing is, if y'all go through something detrimental and survive it, y'all are pretty much locked in. Okay? So... And, and 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 number three, just don't go nowhere. It sound it sounds crazy, but that's how you that's how you maintain a long lasting relationship. Because for them years, them them twenty or them thirteen years before my wife and I got married, we always we would just take breaks from each other. But then my wife would just no matter who was I with, she would just randomly just pop back up. You know, so she just never went anywhere. I just never had the time to really even get to know somebody else. Even when I was dating somebody else, it was still a thing of um, when I was with the other person, I was like, I'm up here enduring with this dummy. I could be with my wife. When we weren't wife at the time, but. Quotes such as those made it sound as if Phyllis was alone and continued her tradition of advertising her pain. But she was in a committed relationship, and though she said she wanted to marry and have children, that claim is suspect. Phyllis, in fact, had always been adamant about not wanting kids. Now, as her new album climbed the charts, Phyllis discovered she was pregnant once again. She went and got an orsha. Her stance was somebody that's touring like this, that's trying to get their career off the ground, cannot afford to be pregnant. Shasta La Vista to those of you who do do it, but Phyllis, I'm not doing it. That's not my choice. That's not what I want to do. Tad, of course, would have gladly married Phyllis, but she stated that she now took marriage very seriously, though she didn't the first time around with Larry. I believe that marriage should be a strong and moral area between the man, the woman, and God. I didn't get married with that in mind, and I regret that because I think we made a mockery of the situation. I think Larry was in it. I really do think Larry was wholeheartedly in it. I just think she just wasn't, you know? And people that are bipolar get uh, bored easily. It's like they're always looking for an adrenaline rush. And I think Larry was a nice guy. Now, if Larry was stealing money out of her purse, beating her upside the head and fucking her sister, then she would have stayed with him, but he was boring to her. That's what I believe. I promised God that I wouldn't play with him in that area again. I do believe in the institution of marriage, though. But to me, marriage is a lot more than two people getting together and hanging out with each other. Three days after the orchard, Phyllis returned to the road as the opening act for a series of Al Jarreau shows. The dates provided good exposure for Phyllis. And while she was the opening act, she was playing in 10,000 seat arenas. Generally, she preferred much smaller houses and her material was much better suited for them, as several reviewers pointed out. But it was a good booking. On the road, Phyllis was tense. She tried hard to maintain her sobriety, but with nothing to take the edge off, she was operating on a short fuse, which was still drinking champagne from time to time. After this, her uh, people got her on the Letterman show. Oh, I used to love David Letterman, okay? 
the Today Show and uh, the Tonight Show again. Performances were nice, but the creme de la creme of Sheila Eldred's promotional campaign was a spot on the Tonight Show. Johnny Carson was still the reigning king of late night, and he remembered Phyllis fondly from her performance to promote sophisticated ladies. By the time Phyllis, wearing another sensational Cassandra McShepard number, appeared on the show February 4th, 1987. Living All Alone was slowly climbing up the chart. Glenda and Sheila were both sure that her appearance on the show would push it all the way to the top. Living All Alone, the album had yet to go gold. The album reached number 11 R&B, number 78 pop, while Shirley Jones, always in the mood, managed to reach number 8 R&B, number 136 pop. The Whitehead Brothers album failed to even chart at all, and the biggest winner on PIR, Manhattan Capital EMI, would be the OJs when their Let Me Touch You album was released, March 1987. At the time of the Carson taping, only 226,000 units of Living All Alone had been sold, or in other words, it was still less than halfway to gold status. Glenda monitored sales closely following the taping, anxious to see what the Tonight Show appearances would do for the record. An additional 45,000 copies of the album was moved in the month following Phyllis's appearance on Carson. But gold was still a long way off. From a historical perspective, it was still a good showing for Phyllis and Living All Alone was already one of her best-selling albums, second only to 1979's You Know How to Love Me. Living All Alone, the single, did only two points better than its predecessor, reaching number 12 R&B. Linda blamed Phyllis's inability to top the charts on Philadelphia International's distributor, Manhattan Records. Manhattan's relationship with PIR was rapidly deteriorating by this time, and it was obvious that the two labels would not enjoy the lengthy and successful partnership that PIR had known with CBS. Number one or not, Living All Alone was still doing wonderful. Things for Phyllis and her career, and she was working nonstop. Upon returning to New York, following the Tonight Show taping, Phyllis had dates in February 1987 in Philadelphia, Boston, Hartford, Connecticut, Richmond, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. before the close of the month. She also had to go into the recording studio in New York to work on a very special new project. Spike Lee had asked Phyllis not only to sing a song for the soundtrack of his new film, School Days, but also to sing it in the movie. Father Boss, hey. Hollywood Hollywood 